Thank you. <laughs> Clay Bedford once said, you can teach a student a lesson for a day, but if you can teach him to learn by creating curiosity, he will continue the learning process as long as he lives. I know you all can't see this, but I cited this code in APA format. <laughs> Bedford C, 2012, quotation about learning, retrieved from quotegarden.com. I figured since our teachers are present here, I should cite my references. <laughs> Dear teachers, I better be getting some bonus marks for this. <laughs> Anyways, good afternoon to our special guest, faculty and staff, class of 2013, family and friends. First, congratulations to all of you in achieving a great success and a milestone in your journey to accomplishing your goals. Class of 2013, we did it. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize family members, friends, faculty and peers for all the support they have provided us in achieving this significant milestone in our lives. Let's give them applause. I would also like to give my humble gratitude to faculty and my peers who have given me this chance to represent the class of 2013 today. Without your help, I would not have been given this chance to represent this class with a lengthy speech comprised of highly personal anecdotes, a chance I now plan to take full advantage of. As I was preparing my speech, I started to think back and ask myself, why did I choose to be enrolled in early learning and childcare program? And more specifically, why Bow Valley College? What is it that differentiates BVC from other institutions? BVC is a unique institution that brings together students from diverse cultural background to create an environment not only for learning academic knowledge, but to learn about cultures and values. In my two years at BBC, I got to learn a bit of Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Hindi, and Lugandan. I also got to try some cultural dishes, such as kimbap, cassava, metuke, and many, many more. Besides the fun times at Bow Valley College, what is it that makes this institution so great? Whether it is standing in long lineup at Tim Hortons, <laughs> or waiting in long lineup to warm up our food in microwave, <laughs> or waiting for the opening of New South Campus and a new huge library, or getting an opportunity to be a part of the international practicum in Uganda, we feel an intellectual, an artistic, and cultural freedom to think, to serve, to debate, to question, and to explore our potentials. We feel confident to pursue our dreams and passions, whether it is to be a child educator, and a law enforcement specialist, or an Aboriginal counselor, and a nurse, or a pharmacy technician and a youth justice specialist. At BDC, we know that our dreams can become reality, and any passion and or path we wish to pursue is within our reach. As someone immigrating from a controlled political environment, where women do not have the same freedom as men, I do not take this freedom for granted. I immigrated to Canada about two years ago. Coming to a new country without having support of family and friends, I was scared. I was nervous about integrating into Canadian culture and its way of life. However, I was fortunate enough to get an admission in BBC, where I received the support of my peers and faculty 
to realize my own potential and potential of those around me. BBC's approach and advocacy to pluralism has made this institution a great success. The Aga Khan once said, we might not just talk about ideal harmony, the sounding of a single chord, but also about counterpoint. In counterpoint, each voice follows a separate musical line, but always a part of a single work of art with a sense both of independence and belonging. Each and every day, we feel this belonging and confidence at BBC, whether it is through sharing tears in diversity class or having debates after class presentations. This institution is not only a window to the future, but an endless hall of open doors inviting and demanding that its students engage with the world in order to enrich our own understandings and become a positive agents for change. We are deeply grateful to BBC for providing us with opportunities and experiences that may not be available to others. And we leave this institution with a hefty responsibility to give back to community what BBC has given us, power, freedom, opportunity, joy, love, respect, and compassion. We may not have enjoyed all the pop-up quizzes, long research papers, and presentations our beloved teachers unloaded on us. But today, we have to admit, they instilled immensely valuable traits in us responsibility, maturity, and compassion have become extremely important parts of our identity. And for this, we are tremendously grateful to our teachers. Thank you, teachers. As we celebrate today, with our caps, gowns, diplomas, and certificates, we know that we have a lot of heavy lifting to do. We want to desperately make a difference. We want to leave our mark on society because we went through it. Whether we have concrete plans after today or we are taking some time to figure things out, we all have dreams. And one thing I have learned from BBC is to be fearless in pursuit of those dreams. As we leave BBC today, that spoils us with the student packages on the first day of classes and provides us choice between Starbucks and Tim Hortons. <laughs> I hope we never forget to create new visions and fearlessly work to achieve those visions. So let us now continue to keep this flame alive as we head into the world. And may we always ensure that the respect of our campus is maintained never forgetting to heed the alumni's motto of giving something back to college for all that it has given to us. Thank you, and congratulations once again. Thank you. Wasn't she great? Yes. Samia, you just spoke so eloquently on behalf of the graduating class. And uh, thank you for highlighting the diversity advantage of studying with people from 125 different countries. On behalf of your graduating class, we're happy to present you with this memento of this day. Thank you. Thank you.